years ago, Dubai unveiled the world's first regulatory body dedicated exclusively to virtual assets, from crypto to traditional finance on blockchain. It's called the Virtual Assets Regulatory Authority, or VARA. How has the government body brought emerging players in the sector to the negotiating table to foster innovation while managing risk? My colleague Aishwarya Anand finds out from VARA's managing director, Deepa Raja Carbon, on the sidelines of Jitex Global. Take a look. So I would say two years ago when we were set up, two and a half years coming up on, right, it was a different world. We were in a place where crypto was very native crypto only. And over the last year, since we've started to have our full-fledged traditional license, uh, we find a lot more trad players participating in it. So what used to be a bringing people to the negotiating table, as you rightly put it, has changed dramatically. People want to be regulated, right? People want to be in a place where there is a credibility attached to them being regulated and being able to participate in this industry and service a global audience yeah. at that. So that's been a huge shift for us. When you're uh, thinking of giving the license to a particular company, yeah. what are the parameters that you look at? Mm. And, uh, you know, I mean, of course, like Bi uh, Binance is like the latest example who's gotten the chance to re-enter Dubai. So uh, help us understand, like, I mean, what is the advice that you give to founders who want to get a license from Vara? Yeah. And I mean, what are the parameters that you work on? Uh, so we have a fairly comprehensive regulatory book, right, which we had put together over the last couple of years. It came into full play before our full-fledged licenses started to get issued. It is not necessarily a derivative of TradFi. It's quite customized for the DeFi world, but certainly based off TradFi principles, yeah. right? And as a consequence, you're in a place where you start to understand that the audience that's talking to you has not only made itself aware of the rules before they come in for those dialogues, but you're also seeing a lot more advisory bodies. But the second part of it is a few bad actors do not spoil the name of an industry. It's been in existence for well over two decades now, right? The blockchain ecosystem has been around for a long time. In fact, the Indian market has done phenomenally well in, uh, in having your gift city. You've, uh, you've obviously had huge amounts of investment that have been made in, in breeding that talent, in calculating that talent. And you find that, what, 12%? of the global uh, web developers, our blockchain developers, are from, are from India, right? So you clearly understand that, your market clearly understands, and this is about saying a regulatory environment gives you a chance to scale. We've seen a lot of Indian Web3 companies migrate to UAE and mm. set up in Dubai. So I mean, is there some conversation? Because of course, like the crypto tax there is pretty high, and I understand the mm. benefits that Dubai provides to them. But I mean, are you in talks with the government to work together on something? And since you've provided the license to a lot of global crypto co companies, uh, are there any particular Indian companies that you're in talks with that mm. you're excited about? Mm. Mm. Uh, so firstly, great question, right? And, uh, and bilats are a prerequisite. Yeah. To, to any industry scaling, especially when you talk about the Web3 blockchain world, it's a borderless economy, and we're heading towards that already, right? Yeah. We've got 6 million, 10 million people in the UAE, 6 million in Dubai, right? And that is not a large enough population base for you to build an industry around, but that's, that's always been part yeah. of our DNA. We create industries to become the hub for the wider region, the super region, India is included, the subcontinent, of course, and the rest of the world. So for that, you basically need the credibility of that government to feel that it's a risk they're willing to undertake to cater to their market. Up until such time as the Indian market has developed a set of very customized rules for this industry to cater specifically for the Indian market, and this applies to the rest of the world, it's not India-specific, right? You need to move towards some level of harmonization and regulations globally. And the world's still getting there. Yeah. Right? And that's essentially the conversation we are having with a whole bunch of regulators, India being one. We've had, I mean, the SIPA was signed, the, the Comprehensive uh, Economic Partnership Agreement, about two years ago. And since then, um, the relationship, trade uh, relationships with India have absolutely skyrocketed. It was always great, and now it's just moved from being number three to number one as far as trade partnership is concerned, which is phenomenally good. And this is not just for traditional finance trade and commodities trade, right? It's very much about talent. A uh, UAE wants uh, to, like, you know, create 40,000 virtual asset jobs by the end of 2030. Mm -hmm. But what's the balancing act between regulation 
and fostering innovation and how is Bharat driving that? So, um, this is not one or the other. It's not a choice, yeah. right? It has to happen together. Yeah. Absolutely must. Yeah. Innovation only comes when there is regulation. You've seen the world of absolutely. crypto. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. go through. Let's not bother. They're not going to be there anyway. And it's, it's been just a absolutely, coaster, right? yeah. it's been a yeah. roller coaster. But what's phenomenal is the fact that the industry has actually come back and how, right? Not just in the rest of the world, but also in India. So, I do think that in, in the context of the UAE wanting to create X thousand jobs, X hundred thousand jobs. Even the coders visa, the golden visa program, the talent program that we have created is for entities to understand that regulation helps you actually gain credibility and get there faster. And most of your companies are heading to IPO and you've also found in that space that only works if you are people that understand the need for compliance. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Startup Street. More news.